All right. We are back with another round of Operation Rising Giant here on the beautiful Gorodok. If you don't know who we are, we are Squad Ops. I'm CMYK Matter, your host. And joining me again, my buddy, my man, taking down nine kills in the MTLB, Muff Bandit. Great work, man. How did that feel? How'd that feel? Well, thank, well, thank you, Matter. It, it felt pretty good. I, I didn't know how many I had. I didn't even try to keep track. I was just playing <laughs> for the team. Yeah, and then we died, though. We did die in the end. Got our Yeah, yeah, you got taken out in the end. Yeah, you got but, taken out in the end. They got a good little push on you there, but, but still impressive work. You and Sightless working really well together. I feel like you guys had some good coordination using that local comms. Uh, how do you feel that went? Was coordination pretty good? Uh, coordination was great. I had a great di driver. His name was Sightless. Yep. And hopefully I get him again. I just got word that I am going to command another MTLB during this round. Nice. We'll get to see some more muff action in the MTLB. I'm excited. Yep. I'm excited. So uh, you, you kind of stopped that push that came in from the southeast. What was the plan there? Did you just kind of see him come over the hill and, and just kind of park in the right place? Well, you know what? First we were watching like kind of west, and we had a good little spot there. And then – we get word that they're coming from the southeast, and we're like, ah, "Are we sure?" You know, and Odessa's like, "Yeah, I think we're pretty sure they're coming." And, yeah, and we're like, "Fine, okay, we're gonna we're gonna start looking that way." And as soon as we look that way, there, here they come, boom, right there, and uh, perfect. And I just took took shots, just started lighting up the MTLBs. They were the main perfect. target. Stop them! It's a, it was a long shot for any for any lat to make from that distance. So I, I figured I would see them first and at least get shots on them and keep them suppressed. But it worked out really well. Yeah. Uh, looks like we're looks like we're doing some briefing right now though. So I yeah, watch you yeah. guys go. All right. Good luck, Muff. We'll see you in the second round. All right, thanks a lot, guys. And we now have the luck of getting in, getting to listen to Best Pony's briefing. So we're gonna shut up and listen here to him. going to push in and crush them. We're going to envelop the team and destroy it. How we're going to do that is the whole team is driving the MTLBs and the transport truck to the mound, which I'm not going to mark because, uh, yeah, they might still be scoping shit out in admin camp. Um, and then after we dismount at the mound, we're going to form a platoon line with uh, squad 3 on the left in Lima 8, keypad 7, uh, and squad 4 on the far right in Mike 8, keypads and then squads one and two will be in the middle squad one will be lima eight keypad eight and squad two will be lima eight keypad nine you'll have a hundred meters for each squad to spread out so i don't want to see bad combat spacing or i will be very upset with you now what we're going to do from there is we're going to advance uh all the way up to the five six line and then from there we're going to use a combined arms approach uh one mtlb will be on the western flank with squad three the other MTLB will be run by command and will be in the middle of the formation with squads 1 and 2. And we will just push directly into Akeem and just take over the town. Like, we're, we're just going to smack into it, clear all the buildings out, get the radio down, and just wipe out all the militia inside. If we do it correctly, we should, in fact, take the town before they even know what's going on. They'll likely have squads that are scattered and outside the town. The armor, once we reach the town and you guys are into clearing buildings... Uh, we'll probably pull off to go cut off additional militia reinforcements from other areas. And you, you'll, it'll just be on you to clear all these buildings and take out that FOB radio. Does that make sense? Roger. And just so to is this just explain a another creek? detail during the... This is not a blitzkrieg. This is a, a slow, methodical, deliberate assault. We're, we're just splitting the mound because it's a good staging area, and because if we staged the platoon line down here and walked all the way, it would take us an hour just to get to a key. The mound is and about halfway there, so we only have to walk about 600 meters from the mound to our starting uh, position from which we commence the attack. Also, if you hear mortars, don't stop, don't run backwards, keep moving forwards. It's very difficult to pre-site mortars on positions that you haven't reached yet, but it's very easy to site the mortars on where you are. If you drop to the ground and you hear a mortar round, that's exactly what the enemy wants. They're going to splash right on top of your head. If you sprint through it or just walk through it and keep moving forwards, it's unlikely that the rounds will hit you. They should splash harmlessly behind you as you advance. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. 
provided a mortar. All right, and we're just gonna we we're just gonna detail the the actual assault real quick. Once we get to the five six line, squad three on the left is gonna try and take that left and most farmhouse Lima five K seven K one. Squad two or squad one is gonna try and hit the the house with the green roof Lima five K seven K two. Squad uh one or sorry, squad two is gonna hit the the other building in Lima five K four K six, and squad four is gonna flank to the woods in. Lima 5, K9, K3, and try to provide supporting fire on the back sides of the houses. Once we've cleared those buildings, we're just gonna, you're just gonna keep moving, right? You're gonna go clear the other side of Akeem, armor's gonna move up and continue supporting. It's all gonna be glorious. Anyone have any questions? Smoke policy? Uh, uh smoke policy is... Smoke him if you got him. If you have to cross a big fuck off open go, field, gotcha. don't be afraid to toss some smokes. However, if you toss smokes halfway across a big open field, the only person who you're going to help is the enemy, because when you get through that smoke, they're just going to see you right on the other side of it, and you're not going to see them running up to it. So if it's, yep. if it's big enough, don't smoke it. If you can smoke their position from where you are, then do so. Because if you just smoke partway across, then you're just obscuring your vision, and you're giving them a target to fire at. They can put suppressive fire with the airs on it and mow you all down. Try not to find yourself in a position where you need to throw a smoke grenade. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's, that's really the best policy. <laughs> wow. I love you, Muff. Uh, ideally, Muff is going to kill all of the enemies while they're inside the buildings trying to peek at you when you're trying to move up, yeah. so you won't even need smoke grenades because all the people trying to shoot you are dead. Peek Pikachu. Yeah, exactly. Pikachu, Pikachu. 600 meters. All right. Any, any other questions? Any concerns? I do have a concern. All right, so we got to listen in to the Russia briefing there for this. Yeah, Pikachu. I heard it too. I was wondering if anybody was going to say it. <laughs> this is good stuff, but that was a good little brief. It was interesting to see his plan of kind of just pushing up real hard and, and kind of doing a platoon line and shoving up through. So let's go ahead and take a moment to go over Operation Rising Giant, the operation that we're running tonight. Exactly. So... The militia get themselves two ARs, one lat, one scout, and one medic per squad. They also get to pick three technicals of any type, one MTLB and SVT, one Logi Dump, and one FOB that they will be placing on Akeem. For Russia, they get two ARs, two LATs, and one medic per squad. They also get two MTLB and SVTs and one transport truck that they are able to use. So the general purpose of this operation are that militia have taken over the town of Akeem. They've dropped their communications equipment there, and they are going to be holding out in the village of Akeem. For Russia, they are going to be tasked with trying to push in and clear the village of Akeem of all militia contacts. Ultimately, this is kind of a last man standing up. Whoever is able to eliminate all of the enemy forces, they are going to be the victors. That being said, it's not too much about victory around here. We're more in it for the experience. I really love me some Rising Giant. This is a fun, fun operation on a big map. Big old map. Lots of cool stuff happening. So the Russian side, like I said, I would be spectating on the Russian side all night. So let's look around here. Russia is going to be blue all night. So anybody that you see is blue, that is going to be the Russian team. Anybody that you see is red is going to be a militia team, and they are off way in the distance up there at Akeem. Shattered Ritual and his boys, Anywhere else. they're going to be on the militia That's, side this uh, time. Else, so they flipped it around. If you noticed last time, Best Pony was commanding the militia, and Shattered Ritual was commanding the Russians. For the second round, we flip that so everybody gets to experience it from a different location. Good stuff. So let's go ahead and take a moment to go over the commands and their capable squad leads. Obviously, for Russia, we've got Best Pony as the command, and then his capable squad leads, Captain Matt, Creeping, Odessa, and the Gaming Brennan. And then for the other side, commanded by Shattered Ritual, on the militia team this time, it's going to be his capable squad leads, Tedish, Nasty Nate, Xbit, and One Tap Man. 
So, pretty cool stuff. One Tap Man taken over. I believe Hamley was originally the squad lead on that side, but I think he had to drop out. So, we now have One Tap Man in command. Not a problem. Absolutely an experienced person here in Ops. Carpy, you see on your screen, mounted up. Sitting in that transport to right truck. Big yes on your screen now, right also sitting in that truck. So it should have killed me. Getting ready Mock to maneuver him. out. Who's... And it looks like Militia will be getting their defenses ready over here. Russia is pretty much ready to go. Militia, sadly, because of their spawn location on this map on the southwest side, they have to take a good bit of time to maneuver over there. So it's going to take them a little bit. But once they get their guys spawned in, they might do themselves a briefing. I'm not really sure of the status of their briefing right now. I have to oh, find out. I did a no briefing. Looks like there's no briefing yet for Militia, but they're kind of getting everybody spawned in and getting the plan together. See Server Air 404 on your screen, getting ready. The Militia just basically have to hold that village in Akeem. And that's all they have to do, just wait there and hold it. While Russia has the task of trying to clear it, so we'll see if they're able to actually do that this time. Last time, the Russians were not successful. Militia held out quite well. And they were able to overwhelm the enemy as they tried to push in. They got good shots on the MTLB earlier, and they were able to take them out. So if you don't know who we are or what we do, we are Squad Ops. We are a community who runs One Life Operations in the game Squad. Squad is a fun little tactical teamwork-based game that is all about making sure that you guys have a good time while also having a little bit more of a less arcadey experience. It's a great game. If you don't know what it is, you should go check it out. But in the meantime, you got us to hang out with, and I think that's pretty neat. You guys are all my friends hanging out in Twitch chat. If you got any questions or anything you want to know about squad or squad ops, feel free to ask them. I'm always happy to answer. But in the meantime, we see Militia kind of getting themselves into position. I do wonder if they're going to actually let's see I do wonder if they're going to actually try to get a briefing together or if they're just going to kind of let their guys do their thing and uh, my squad looks like shadowed right now is like telling the, the squad the leads what's going on so we're going to listen yeah, in on that on the a rocket bit. marks any uh id should be placed around the fob proper the fob, fob building proper just so whenever they occupy them so like here-ish, here-ish, here-ish. What? Here. Uh, what's the objective here? Defend the fob. No, no, that was just a diversion to uh, make you Any questions? Side, so. All right. All right. Let's meet up for the uh, fob. Let's meet up for the uh, platoon brief. We'll do it right here by the SPD tech. Yeah, yeah, briefing. Uh, come over, line up for the brief. Alright, as soon as Jen Ray gets here. Yeah, we're all gonna just run at Russian main and uh, see if we can get them before they leave main. Alright guys, nice try last time. It was a pretty good attempt. Uh, this time we're gonna try and do the same thing to them. Just uh, We're gonna defend Akeem from the uh, Russian forces coming in. Squad 1 is going to be to the uh, far east to try and cut off any attempt to come through the woods on the uh, Lodgy Mark. They're going to harden up there and they're going to be facing uh, east and well, or south, I mean, and just watching uh, the eastern part of the team. Squad 2 is going to be in charge of the uh, eastern, northeastern part of the team, just northeast of the fob on the green fob marker. Squad 3 is a hunter-killer squad. They're going to... Uh, 
mount up in a Dishka Techie and an SPG Techie and move out of a team north, moving uh, northwest and then head along the uh, south or west side of the map. They're going to drop their mine on that bridge and, and drop a uh, scout team to watch your northern flank uh, along the peninsula. Squad 4 is in charge of our west-southwest on the uh, red bomb markers. And uh, my squad will be uh, floating between uh, probably the uh, south part since that's going to be the most likely approach. Mines are going to go down in... We're going to try and create a little minefield in this field on the uh, sniper mark. And any IEDs I want placed in buildings around the FOB. Your scouts, your job is to stay alive until the very end. So any any kind of building that they can possibly get into, that uh that you that you're gonna you're, so the plan is you're gonna you're gonna be in that building and then as soon as they start pushing you you're gonna pull out of that building and let them occupy it and then you're gonna blow the IED. So it's really like a uh, just a trap, and uh, that's how I want to play with the IEDs. Uh, any questions? Cool. Uh, squad leads, break them up for any last minute details. I'll call for live. Any questions? That's all good. We're good. Good briefing, squad. All right. So you got to listen listen in on the militia plans there. So it looks like they're going to just be spreading out a little bit, dropping IEDs in the buildings, and putting a little minefield down in this field over to the east, which is the one he was talking about. Uh, while we were listening in on their briefing, Parker asked, "How do we design the operations? We have a wonderful." operation design team within our community hammer and hutch xbit a few other guys but we always take suggestions from the community as well to design these operations and put them together i'm mostly thinking of grinder recently which was an operation we ran that basically got hammered out one night in discord after a regular event with just a bunch of regulars and hutch in a channel just talking about stuff joking a little bit and out of it came an operation, and that was Grinder. We've run that a few times. That's over on Al Basra. Really good stuff. Yep. So they come from all over the place. You know, sometimes they are just an idea that somebody had, and they kind of put it together themselves. Sometimes there's a collaboration between multiple people. Sometimes it's the team working on it. And there we go. We are live. Militia ready. Russia ready. And we are live. So everybody's going to start moving out for the second round of Operation Rising Giant here with Squad Ops. If you want to know more about Squad Ops and our One Life operations, I recommend you head over to squadops.gg where you can find all of the information about us, join up on our Discord, talk to us, hang out, and come hang out with me. I'll talk to you. You know, I sit in there a lot during the day. So big yes on your screen there. Russian transport truck riding in. It looks like Pony is going to be pushing his forces up, and they are going to then dismount and kind of move in as this big platoon line, as we heard them talking about earlier so a lot of people a lot of people going to be moving up there dave cleese asking what the op objective is we went over that a little bit ago but we'll go over it again this one is rising giant so the russians here the guys that i'm following right now with these two mtlbs in their transport truck they are going to have to push north and they are going to have to take the village of akim the militia have held up in the village of Akeem. It's the one to the northeast with the red fob marker. And all they have to do, militia has to hold it and make sure that the Russians don't push in. Meanwhile, the Russians are going to be trying to do their best to clear out that village, clear the fob, and make sure that there are no militia forces left. Simple attack defense on this one, but it's in the town of Akeem. The militia do get one lodgy dump so they are able to build some stuff. The Russians, however, get two LATs in each of their squads, as well as these two big MTLBs. So a lot of boom boom there. A lot of boom. So that's what's going on tonight in Operation Rising Giant. If you're just joining us, this is Squad Ops. We are a community that runs One Life Operations in the game squad. If you want to know more about us, check us out, squadops.gg. Good stuff over there. Really good stuff. Got a forum, got some Discord action, 
Got all of our information there. You can find out everything. So let's see what these Russian forces do. We've got a couple guys pushing up here. This is Best Pony, actually, command. Tagsman and Smith pushing up with him as well. In this MTLB, it looks like they might be just trying to get some advance warning, get some advance notice if there's anything there. So the MTLB here in the front of your screen. So the MTLB, it is slow. It's clunky. It's loud. But the great thing about this thing is that it has a big old mounted NSVT on it, and it can hold 19 guys. So 19 you and 18 of your best friends can all mount up in this thing and get somewhere. If you need to move a whole lot of people to one place, then that's what you want to use, that MTLB. I think it can hold the most people of any Vic in the game. I don't think anything can hold more. I think the Striker actually can only hold 11. The VTR might be close, but that thing is a big beast. It can hold a lot of guys in it. A bunch of them mount up in the back. I love when that thing's fully loaded because a bunch of people then end up sitting like up on the top of it and it looks really cool reminds me of all those old world war ii photos with guys sitting on the top of their shermans and stuff riding them in the towns and stuff always reminds me of that i think it's really neat so we've got jack reynolds here on point on the western side getting into position and pony was talking about making this big platoon push so we'll see how they actually operate that if we take a look on the map here, they're getting a good line spread out. See this line forming here. And they are going to try to do their best to keep that line in place as they push across the map. So we'll see how that goes. There's, Look at this line formation. Look at this platoon line The Best Pony has set up for us. Oh, man. He didn't just do it for me. It's, it's actually a valid tactic, but... Man, I love the look. Holden, to sign up for Squad Ops, all you got to do, head over to squadops.gg, register yourself with a forum account, hop into our Discord, get yourself set up there, go through SOTT Basic, and you can register for the operations. So that's all you got to do. Head over to, S or to squadops.gg. You can find all the information about our One Life events and how to get involved in them. Oh, man. So there is... A little bit different something a little different x bit in the spg techie way out to the west cruising down the msr it looks like they might be acting as kind of a flanking force we'll see they are way out here you can see those there's these two vehicles way out here let me see if i can get in position to check them out they might try to hook themselves south and maneuver across the bridge and kind of act as a flanking force It'd be pretty interesting if they're able to actually do that effectively. Here they are. They are in the center of my screen. Saloon number 12, Dagos, Xvit, John Hancock pushing around. Dishka Techie and an SPG Techie. So these are two of the tech technicals that they actually chose to use. And they are just cruising, boy. Whoa. This thing is pretty crazy fast. Let's see if I can get it up here. All right, so the Dishka Technical that you see in the middle of your screen here, that thing is mounted up with a Dishka in the back. It can only hold five people. It's pretty fast. doesn't have much in the way of defenses, but it can lay down some hurt with that Dishka gun mounted on it. I like the Dishka Techies. I love these Discotechies. I think that they're pretty cool. Pretty good stuff. This is the second round for everybody asking in chat. SPG Techie pulling up as well, getting stuck on some rocks, it looks like. The SPG Techie, similar to the Discotechie, can hold five, but it is mounted with an SPG recoilless rifle. If you don't know what that SPG-9 does, it can shoot straight ropes of rockets pretty much it does about as much damage as an rpg but this thing can fire over a very long range and do a lot of damage to a vehicle if it is able to hit pretty cool stuff so they've pushed it up onto this radio antenna hill 
And it seems like for now they're just gonna gonna hold up here. Off to their east, Xbit, looking off to his east. They're trying to get some eyes on this push that's going on. Well, they don't really know where the push is yet, I don't believe, but he's looking north. They're trying to get some eyes out and see what's going on, see if they can spot this push before it comes in. But this force is just moving up in a big old platoon line. Look at this. Shots coming in on the east. Let's see what's happening over here. Looks like these guys pushing across this field are taking shots. Everscience, Shamrock, Grim Reaper, Gaming Brennan, FX-1000 taking shots from a squad up to the north. Boogie, blazing fire, putting shots back in on them. Tedish, firing in on them. Man, that smoke, trying to use it to kind of obscure their position. But ultimately, since it's so close to them and this is just a giant field, that smoke's not going to do them much good. We'll see if they're able to make this push. I feel like somebody already got dropped over here. They're firing some more shots in here. From the south, Silverman, Gonzo the Gons, in the center of your screen there, putting in shots to the north. You can see him laying in that fire with that AR, trying to cover for his guys as they push in. We'll see if they're able to do it. This big command or this big platoon line. I hear Pony saying he wants to get up there and take a look and see how this push is going to go. They all shift themselves a little west and start shoving up behind this hill, this little defilade that's in front of them. If you see this little hill, that's basically what they're using as concealment as they push up. Oh, the MTLB opens up over here. Shots coming in. Kevin gets hurt. Technocris bleeding out. Shots coming in on the south side of Akeem. This big push coming through. Oh, no. Keevan. Keevan's in the woods. Keevan's right behind Jack Reynolds. He's got contact close. Part-time Ninja Turtle. Very close to him as well. He's bleeding. Fall back. Fall I can't back. believe that Keevan's just holding these woods. Fall back. Muff might have seen him. He's close. Okay, Muff's looking right in there. You can see him checking out that area. They know that there's contact. I can't believe Keevan's holding these woods, though. Jack Reynolds gets shot by him as well. Jack doesn't know where that contact is. Keevan holds the bush. Jack Reynolds goes down again. No, Jack. Having a rough week. Keevan holding that, and he goes down to part-time Ninja Turtle. Unfortunate for Jack Reynolds. Keevan, though, holding that. Takes down one. Oh, man. Poor Jack. I feel so bad. He was the first one out last round. And I don't know if he's the first one out here, but it was one of the first, certainly. So this squad here, Carpy, pushing through this field with his squad. Iron Feast, Carpy on your screen, crawling through this field. Shots coming in over his head. Creeping, Truth Round, Big Yes and Taps pushing around him. And here comes the MTLB. Driven by Smith. This is command. Best pony pushing up with the MTLB. He says, you know what? You know what? I'm going to be right in front. I'm going to be right in front. Oh, the MTLB to the west opens up. Some shots coming back in. We'll see what happens here. They're crawling up through this field, creeping, bleeding. Some shots come in from him. Best pony, he is determined that he is going to just kind of hold it here and take these shots in. Oh, man. Expit on your screen. Pushing up from the south. Here comes that flank that we talked about with those technicals that they had placed out to the west. They're sitting on Radio Hill, and here they now come in behind. They're moving along. They're not trying to go too fast. They want to make sure that they get good shots in. Expit kind of dismounted up here, and he's looking in trying to make sure that they get good position. They're going to use that SPG techie to try to get a good flank on the MTLBs and take them out. We'll see if he's able to do it. Expit pushing in by foot. Believes he can get a good view. So Carpy on that screen there, he has pushed across the field, and they have made it up to the fence. So this southern push, a lot of people hurt, but they're doing okay. Oh, no, no, no. Nope, MTLB got hit. It's backing out. It's yellow health. 
That's Best Pony, the command, in this thing. It got hit once, and they have backed up. We'll see what's able to happen here. Taps creeping, pushing in. They've got cover from the south. This squad over here to the south firing in, making sure that they've got cover. Creeping, moving up. Good maneuver here with the fire coming in from the south to make sure that they've got cover. The Dishka opens up on the MTLB. It takes hits. They fire back in, and down goes... Was that Rate? Yeah, Rate goes down. Shots come in. Techno Chris goes down. They push on the building. Creeping and Carpy get taken out from two guys in the building. Taps pushing up. He's going to have guys in the window. Two guys went down trying to clear those buildings. So far, this push, they've got a few downs, but they're, they've are they been able to do something at least. One tap gets taken out here on the south. Iron Tyrant, Miyamoto, and Kevin in here. A shot comes out. That takes out the MTLB. Smith and Tagsman go down. Was Big Pony still in that? I think he was. I think he might have been. Dermaplast goes down in the field as well. Yeah, that looks like command down for the Russians. That's rough for them. Exmit sees Muff to the south. He's got eyes on him. They are going to use that techie. Muff firing in. Muff firing into the north in that SPG techie with Exmit in command. Fires in. It hits. It hits. Did that hit the MTLB? No, it hit behind. It hit behind. It was too high. Too high with that shot, but the MTLB. Muff is going to bug out. Oh, another SPG comes in, and that hits Thurman Merman. He's in bad shape. The MTLB gets themselves in position, and it fires back on the Techie, and he's actually able to take down Merrill over there. The Techie's going to pull back, try to get out of there real quick. Oh, no. Those shots coming back in towards Xbit with that technical. They've had to shift focus now that this flanking squad has come in. Shamrocks, the team wiping in a second. That happens sometimes, man. One life operations. They can get crazy. An IED goes off to the north. Did that kill anybody? Doesn't look like it. It's close, but didn't kill anybody. The MTLB, Muff Bandit, opening back up. He's He shoots Xbit. He got Xbit out of it. He shot Xbit out. John Hancock pulling back. Running. Xbit got shot out of the technical by the Muff Bandit. Putting in more shots on that technical. It's, it's in bad shape. That thing's hurting. They got to get it out of there. Good shots from the Muff Bandit. And Sightless, actually, with that AR providing some additional fire. So let's get back into the village now that that flank has been mostly dealt with. It looks like they were able to clear this building. Matrix, Iron Tyrant down in there. And it looks like Jax and Erwin were able to clear this out. Iron Feast pushing up here. We've got shots from, is that the MTLB? Or no, that might be a dishkin placement. Oh no, that is the MTLB. That was an NSVT. I knew I heard that sound. Firing in, Nasty Nate. His crew up here putting in shots on that corner of the fence trying to get some bullet penetration on Iron Tyrant. Goes down in the building, and it looks like they are able to get a foothold. So this is better than Russia was able to do last time. Russia was not able to get a real great foothold in the village, but it looks like this time Russia is able to get a foothold, and we'll see what they're able to do with it now. There is a squad to the northeast. It's just kind of hanging out there. They might come into play later. Silverman and Gonzo the Gons also up there watching. So we'll see. Silverman kind of trying to... I think he's trying to maneuver up to get into position to actually push in the village. He might not even know he has a squad to his north. Uh, Racine's looking up there. Oh, nope. They know. They know. They're all looking that way. They know. Yeah, they're all looking that way. They definitely know they got contact to their north. It's just his fire team. Another IED goes. That doesn't look like it was able to kill anybody either. They blew it a little too soon. Here the MTLB. Muff Bandit. Back down here. Firing in on the technical to the west. 
He's able to get some shots, but the technical pulls back real quick. Now we see Thurman Merman pushing across the field. He goes down. Odessa, Bird Person, Legit Gamer, and Kennet pushing up as well. See if they are able to get this foothold established. They've got a good number of guys already in the southeastern side of Akeem. Now the hard part is going to be clearing out all these buildings. They put out a lot of smoke, but so far they haven't done anything with it. Kedish taking shots from the east. He puts in shots on Silverman's squad. He's bandaging now. They traded some fire back and forth. Kedish still has pretty much a full squad over here. And this is just a fire team from Racine and Gonzo the Gons, Silverman. Some shots coming in from the west on them. They return and fire back in, and they are in a hard place. They're in a hard place over here. That's going to be rough for them. They've got the squad pushing on them from the north. They've got fire coming from Akeem to the west. Kennett goes down as he pushed across the field as well. Now they've got even more. They've got even more. Russia has able to get more guys into Akeem. Another shot goes in. That looks like it hit Muff Bandit. He's all right, though. Oh, he took out... I think he took out the uh, technical over there. Oh, maybe not. A rocket comes in. It hits Muff Bandit and Sightless. They try to put, maneuver themselves into a better position here. Don't want to take another shot. That thing will go down. Another shot goes in. That was Silent Death shoots the technical with Triptes and Dagos in it, and he goes down for it. Trades his life. Part-time Ninja Turtle with his RPG out trying to get ready to see if that technical is going to come in again. We'll see what happens there. Yeah, you know, Satan's saying, good thing Russia have great SLs to take over. They really do. A lot of really good SLs. And as soon as command goes down, they will pass that baton on. The next person will take over, and command comms doesn't really go down. So. It's good to see. They're still moving up here. Tedish and his squad still over there to the east, giving Silverman a hard time. And it looks like Boogie. Silverman got hit by Tedish. He's bandaging up. Boogie pushing across this field. The lonesome flanker, Boogie. They've sent him out here, and he might just get the flank on him. We'll see what happens. I just heard Odessa say that they see the MTLB. They're going to try to get it out with them, their MTLB. See what happens. This four-man squad, Boogie. Boogie pushing up. Boogie has to see him. Maybe not yet. He's close. Harrison pulls back a little bit. Guns of the guns there as well. Tedish and his crew moving up. They're starting to make the push. You can see them coming in from the north. Yeah, Boogie just needs to get a frag grant if he has it. Oh, the Dishkateki has moved up. The Dishkateki from the west has moved up, and it is now putting in shots on Harrison. Guns of the guns. They're trading back shots at it. And that allows Tedish's squad to move up. So that Dishkateki was a good little distraction. Boogie moves up, puts in shots on Harrison. The rest of Tedish's team moves up. Good distraction with that Dishka technical. Gonzo the Gons goes down. They use that Dishka technical brilliantly as kind of a distracting element to allow Tedish's squad to push in. Looks like Tedish did lose one in the engagement. Tedish is hit, bandaging up. Oh! Oh, Boogie goes down. Boogie goes down. A good frag takes him out. It looks like that was the Silver Man who put shots back in on him. Just trying to bandage up now. Everybody trying to get themselves into position to continue this push. Some more frags come in. Racine, guns are the guns. Silver Man, the only guys left here. Putting in some good frags. Back over here on Village, it looks like the push is basically where it was. They haven't moved much. Oh, they've got some people starting to push in, though. They've got some people actually starting to maneuver into place. Truth Realm gets up on this wall. He's really close to scared you on the other side of the wall. Truth goes down to scared you as he pushes up through. 
good fire from him. And he saw him crawling up through that little hole there. So Truth Realm goes down. The MTLB, driven by Sightless and Muff Bandit, operated by them, getting into position here. Looks like they might try to provide cover. Grim Reaper on the east goes down. Silverman putting shots back in on Lucid. Also Racine over here, still alive. Trading shots with Mooney up there on the hill. Mooney, Lucid, Silverman trading back and forth. Silverman just trying to get himself into a good position. A rocket comes out, and it hits Lucid and Mooney. They're bleeding. They're going to have to bandage up. That was a great rocket. If they would have put it a little lower, they might have killed both of them, towards actually. The of the, yeah, towards no, the edge of the I might have been able to take both of them out, yeah, but... Man. Tedish pushing yeah, across. He's got a rocket. Looks like they might shoot it at the MTLB. Let's see. They're getting ready. Uh, Muff's holding it on this wall. He might be able to block a rocket. They're calling that he's in one of the trees. They... Oh, man. Lots of guys up there on that hill. Yep, I, yep, so, I see him. I see him. Are they I'm still going to fire that rocket in? Doesn't look like so. They got into a good place. No, we'll don't shoot, don't shoot. Part time Ninja Turtle laying in fire, Why? making sure that they are not able to get a clean shot on shooting? Muff Bandit and Sightless might... in that MTLB. Yeah, I'm... This is crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> Muff Bandit firing back in. He taps one. I don't know if he got a guy down with that. He, he definitely hit somebody up there, though. MTLB opening back up. Muff Bandit trying to make sure that that hill is nice and suppressed so that his boys Silverman and Racine can link back up with the rest of their troop. Now, the problem for this platoon is they got that foothold in the southeast here, and they stopped. They stopped dead. I don't know if they were trying to get Silverman and his crew back with them, but when they hit that southeast, they just stopped. You see Benbot on your screen there with the RPG. Can't really see the MTLB just yet, but if they maneuver in where he can see them, he'll definitely put in some shots. Now he sees it. We'll see if he's able to get a shot in. That's a long shot for an LAT. That's a very long shot for an LAT. I don't see anything at all. Muff saying he doesn't see anything at all in that thing. We are yellow, by the way, so if we take any hit, um, we're probably going to die. Man, so that thing. That well, I mean, just... Hopefully what shoots us is It's just sitting kind of out in the open right now. You know, there's some fence blocking it on the northeast, but ultimately, it's just kind of sitting out in the open. The situation for Russia is dire. I will definitely say that. They were able to make a push, and they were able to get a good foothold. But once they got that foothold, they got stuck. And whenever you get a foothold, you got to use that to leverage. You can't get stuck. If you get stuck, you sit there, and you lose one guy at a time, lose one guy at a time, lose one guy at a time. And over that war of attrition, you will end up losing it all. So they got that good foothold, He's in the and mind that was kind of it. They, they didn't really push off of it. And we'll see if they're able to actually salvage something out of this. All we hear is boom, boom. Benbot's still up there. Looks like they, they do want to take a shot in, but he's not able to do it yet. Some fire coming in. Silverman taking shots from Tennis. Racine goes down just as he was about to make it in. Just as he was about to get in. Muff Bandit fired back and took somebody out. Was that Tennis he took down? No, it doesn't look like it. Might have been? No, no, Tennis is still up. He put somebody down up there. Benbutt still maneuvering into position with that LAT. That's a very long shot for an LAT. We'll see if he's able to do it. More shots go in on Lucid. <laughs> Schmitty saying maybe they'll make it, and then Racine gets shot. Yeah. <laughs> Silverman, the only one left from that element. Hopefully Silver will make it to that wall. He'd be in better cover if he's able to make it right there. All he has to do is kind of push around this little rock, or this little uh, little fence wall. The MTLB rolls out. Oh, man, a rocket comes in and takes out Big Yes. Here comes the push. The MTLB is getting into position, and here comes the push. Taps, F1, legit gamer, part-time Ninja Turtle, pushing up here 
on the south, and they're going to actually try to clear this village. See if they're able to do it. Some shots coming in from the north. Part-time Ninja Turtle gets tapped from the west. Iron Feast to the west as well. Shots come in towards the MTLB. It's still doing okay, though. Muff Bandit and Sightless pushing this MTLB up into position. See if they can get some good shots. I worry for their safety. A lot of LATs around here still up. There it goes, just as I called it. Oh, man. I think that was Triton. I believe that was Triton. And that was it. Down goes the MTLB. Somebody asking, did Silverman make it? Yeah, Silverman made it. He's right there, hanging out. Another shotgun was in on the dead MTLB. I don't think they knew it was dead. But either way, the firefight breaks out over here on the west. Taps, Evwan. Part-time Ninja Turtle, legit gamer, holding this corner. Silverman off to his east. Iron Feast pushing up here on the far west. He's got Genra on the outside of the wall from him. Looks like he was able to clear that building, though. Good job to Iron Feast on that. Cleared that building on his own, basically. Some more shots come in. These RPGs now trying to open up and get some kills before they go down. Gotta love it, man. Gotta love it. It's getting intense. Silverman's still alive out to the east. Iron Feast here on the west. The rest of these guys held up in the middle. Silverman taking shots. They know he's there. Firing in at him from the northeast. That's still Tedish's squad up there. Okay. They know where he is. And I hear a technical. Yep, the Dish Kateki is back. Saloon number 12 soloing it right now. Or is that the SPG? That is the SPG. We'll see. He's lining it up. See if he puts any shots in. I don't know if he's going to get anybody, but he's got this thing in a really good position. Silverman's still just stuck in that building. Can you, uh, yeah, man. Tedish and Silverman for the last 15 to 20 minutes just firing at each other. You know, trading back and forth, shooting at each other. <laughs> see who can throw the most hate at one another legit gamer and part-time ninja turtle still up here it looks like they've both gone to through two bandages so each of them taking hits and and they're just gonna have this personal duel for the night <laughs> superman's still up over there hanging out in the building i love seeing it i love seeing it that's so good yeah, he's he's pinned down. He can't move out of that building. They know exactly where he is. Legit Gamer and Part-Time Ninja Turtle here. Looks like Iron Feast might have went down in the meantime. And here comes the Dishkateki. I'm hearing it coming in. Where's it coming from? Looks like it's uh, over here on the west. That's Saloon, so that's actually the SVG again. Just yeah, maneuvered into a different position. Tedish's squad has started to move up. Some shots come in on the east. Oh, he got him! He got him! He got him! Silverman just took out Tedish. The duel ends. Silverman takes down Tedish. Or that was Benbot. No, that was Benbot. Benbot. Benbot that went down. Sorry, I thought it was Tedish that went down. Tedish is up. Silverman holding in this building. Silverman and Tedish, the duel of the century. The duel of the century. What can happen? What can happen? Tedish still up. Silverman pushing in. Some shots come in. Silverman laying down some hate on Lucid. He might not know that they're coming close to him. Some shots come back in. Tedish might finish this off. We'll see. They're close. Tedish on one side of the fence. Silverman on the other. The feud of the millennia. <laughs> oh, let's. He sees him in there. He he can see him through there. He's just crawling around. Tedish peeking through. Tedish fires. They shoot at each other. They're both hurt. He hit him. He hit him. Silverman is might be bleeding. More shots come in. Grenade comes out. It's a bad grenade. It's right outside the wall. Another grenade comes in. And that's it. Down goes Silverman. The feud is over. Tedish wins. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, no. <laughs> the feud ends. Tedish and his crew win. Down goes Silver. And that's going to be GG. Yep. GG. These two on the west went down, and that's it. Militia is able to hold for a second round in a row. 
Good job to Militia. Silverman, last man standing. And he goes down. Oh, wow. What a set of rounds. What a set of rounds that we had there for you guys. This was Operation Rising Giant, and we are Squad Ops. If you want to know more about us and our One Life events, head on over to squadops.gg, where we run these things every Wednesday and Saturday. We should be back out here Saturday. I think we'll be streaming that one as well. And we'll give you another operation. Let's see if we're gonna if we're gonna get any interviews here. I think we might get Best Pony and Shattered Ritual. Um, let's see. Might have to pull them into the channel. See if I can grab them. Let's see if we can get them. Yeah, don't go away just yet, guys. We're gonna try to get some interviews here uh, with the commands and see how they uh how they felt about how it went tonight Let's see if we can get them in the meantime though whew, what a crazy op that was good man muff bandit got four kills in the second round nine in the first one he did some work triton getting three as well he's the one who took out that mtlb in the second round good work from him all around a lot of great teamwork a lot of good stuff. Uh, what a fun round. I love Rising Giant. It's on a big, beautiful map in Gorodok. Great stuff. Really beautiful stuff. And we are joined. Actually, we, we'll see if we can get the other one in here. But we are joined by Best Pony now. One of the commands. Best Pony, how do you feel about how those rounds went? Did you feel good about that second one? And then just things fell apart? Or was it... Yeah, what, what happened? Went well, um, second round, I decided to opt for a different strategy because I noticed that Shadowed first round was pushing in for a few different directions yes. that seemed to not work out very well. So I just made a big platoon line and figured, you know, even if we lose, it's still going to be fun to execute if we have that big line formation. So we just smacked right into Akeem, tried to take the town. Didn't go quite as well as I'd hoped, but that's sometimes you win them, sometimes lose. Yeah, you guys got a great foothold, and then it seemed like you got stuck a little bit on that side. But otherwise, really cool platoon line. I, we were watching it from above, and it looked really great. Uh, so I got to say, that was that was entertaining. <laughs> on the, uh, the first round there, yeah, you held with Militia, and it seemed like you guys just kind of formed an impenetrable force in there. Like, nobody could kind of root you out. You had a lot of people right around the FOB direct. Was that kind of the plan from the start? Yeah, that was more or less the intention from the start. I got scouts out early so I could see what the Russians were doing and then had the main body uh, spread around in buildings very close to the FOB just to kind of harden up. And then I yanked people back as necessary as the Russians started to advance closer and closer. That was the intention. Very cool. So Shadowed Ritual you, is joining us as well, the other command. How's it going, Shadowed? Uh, how's it going? Doing well, man. Doing well. How did you feel about that? Uh, that second round felt pretty good, I imagine. Getting a, oh yeah, getting that, a good that defense round, on. It uh, as soon as uh, Tedish was able to ambush that squad coming in from the uh, the east through the the wood line, and he, just, he pulled back, losing maybe one guy. Like I felt like we were we were gonna have a pretty solid foothold. After we got rid of the uh, the initial M the, the first MTLB that, that came up to us, it, it yeah, it, it's it felt like it was gonna get a lot easier. That, that was our priority right there was to right. make sure that there are no MTLBs in Russian teams effectively. I feel like Best Pony, you were in that MTLB, weren't you? The one that pushed up first? Yes. Yeah, so you ended up going down with that. But overall, really entertaining round, a lot of fun. Best Pony, what was your favorite moment of the night? What was your most enjoyable thing that you uh, saw? My favorite moment was at the beginning of the first round when a forward scout from Captain Matt squad called out that there were uh, Russians on the mound area, and we just set up a mortar and dropped rounds right on their heads. <laughs> that was pretty cool to watch. I liked seeing the mortar rounds come in. Those are always interesting to watch on stream. They were really cool. Best or uh, shadowed. What was uh, what was your favorite? What did, what was your favorite moment that you you had in that one? Um, my favorite moment would probably be also in the uh, the same round. I just felt like we had a really good movement in the in the beginning. Just just getting onto onto a team from the east, and I felt like our movement yep. was just on point. It was just the actual push that really really troubled us. But when it, when a platoon moves like really well it just it just feels good it was great to watch i had a really good time uh best pony 
Shadow Ritual, we're going to let you guys go. Thanks for talking with us. And uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Everybody. And we've got two more people in here. <laughs> Some guys that we got to focus on a little bit tonight. Tedish and the Silverman. <laughs> two guys. <laughs> two guys that were duking it out back and forth all night. Did you guys know that you were fighting oh, with the same person all night? No, we didn't. <laughs> I was like, when I, we started the second round, I was like, all right, guys, we're covering the same approach we just took, so you know what they got to go through. It's like, okay. Yeah, that was Yeah. Fun. Yeah, so uh, Silverman had a, a squad that was over on the east. He ended up being the last man alive in that eastern building when you pushed up Tedish. And Tedish was the one that was up on that hill tormenting you the whole time. Both of you guys went through both of your bandages. How did that feel? Was it really intense trying to feel it out, or did you feel like you were in control, or what happened there? How did it feel? No, I did not feel in control when we lost the first five guys of the squad trying to just come up through that forest on the east. That's when it, I just lost it from there. Oh, that, <laughs> that was like picture perfect in the movies. We saw you guys coming, and that was the plan. We were like, we engaged you at the top of the hill when you were halfway across the field, and then as soon as we were like Go actually ahead. fighting, we are like, all right, we're ghosting. Fell back 100 meters waited for you to come into our realm waited for you to like you know whites of the eyes and then six shots you know four people went down so really good work yeah. and you had you had boogie actually push up on the east to try to get a flank on or was he just trying to get eyes what was he trying to do yeah he was trying to go for a flank he was kind of a wild card of saying everybody stick around he's like i'm going for a flank and just kind of went and did his own Ooh. thing so that was a little annoying but ended yeah. up, I think, working out pretty well. You guys had, like, a sandbag set up. We weren't really sure how many guys were behind that at one point. Oh, and that it sandbag might have problem. actually saved us. Yo, yeah, well, that and, like, you had an MTLB behind you that, I guess, Muff was gunning in, so it was, like, can't mm -hmm. get exposed. You couldn't really flank you because you had that thing covering you. Like, I'm sure... But, uh, yeah. yeah, it was it was super fun. And then I had multiple guys in my squad being like, my God! The guy, the guy on the porch is freaking accurate. Four like, <laughs> or five of us as we were advancing, yep. before we advanced, it was like, what the heck? Oh man, it was it was a really good watch. If you guys have the chance to check out the VOD, we had a great coverage of your duel for the end of it. Really yeah. looked good. It was great stuff. But thank you guys well, for joining us. We're gonna we're gonna let you go. And, Thanks for uh, having us. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Fun. Thank you, Tedish, and thank you to Silverman for popping in. And with that, we we're going to wrap it up for the night. We we're going to let you guys go. This has been Squad Ops. We run one life events in the game squad. I'm CMYK Matter. I want to say thank you to everybody that helped make this possible, all the commands and their squad leads, as well as all the cameras we had tonight, managers, staff, all the different teams within Squad Ops, everybody watching, all the viewers. We really appreciate you guys. You're the ones who make it possible, and you're the reason that we do this. So if you want to check us out, head over to squadops.gg. Oh, and one last one. I nearly forgot to thank him, and he's going to blush, but thanks to my main man, Penn, behind the camera. Penn, making it all happen. The best. I love me some Penn. Got to clap for Penn. Such a good dude. But all right, guys, you have yourselves a wonderful night. We'll be back out here on Saturday. Have a good one. <laughs>